Okay, short subjects. I'm going to turn myself into a salesman and advertiser. Uh, we've got a convention coming up in August. Everybody knows that convention's been going on since, oh shoot, the 30s. Uh, the Federation of Eastern Mass uh, uh, Radio Associations has been running our particular local convention for 40 years as of this summer. Uh, I volunteered with Phil K9HI to work on the on the uh, uh, programs committee, and we're looking for talks. Uh, we're trying to get some uh, some from some fresh blood or fresh meat or fresh ideas or whatnot. Uh, one of the complaints that we've had uh, uh, is that uh, it's sort of the same old stuff catering to the same old farts. And we're looking for new farts, basically, and it's going to take some new stuff to do it. Uh, we're looking for talks at all levels. Uh, so if, you, uh, if you've just gotten into FT8, you might be the best guy to give a talk on FT8, for instance. But we want beginner stuff, regular stuff, and we're more than happy to have some really high-tech stuff. And as an example of high-tech stuff, Joe, K1YOW, club member, gave a talk three years ago. It was so well-received that he became a member of the ionospheric science community and got associated with Haystack Observatory. And from that, we got Phil, W1PJE, licensed. <laughs> so it all comes around, okay? But we're, like I say, we're looking for introductory general interest and advanced talks. 45 minutes along, you know, uh, anything shorter than that, people feel like they haven't uh, uh, got their money's worth for sitting in the in an hour session. Anything longer than 45 minutes, and you start cutting into the next guy's talk. Ours is a uh, what I can consider a moderate convention. I know this is an eye chart for folks. But Ham Expo had an attendance of about 1,400 people last year. Uh, as a as an uh, contrast, Hamcation down in Orlando, 19 and a half thousand. Uh, Hamvention, 31,000. Friedrichshafen, 17,000. Uh, you know, we we sort of fall into the Nearfest, CPAC, uh, Huntsville uh, range of of conventions. Small, intimate, friendly. Uh, the only thing that's crowded is the men's room. Uh, on the other hand, the number of talks that we put out, the larger conventions are still down in the 30s and 50s. Last year we had 63 talks. We actually have space for 84, if I can gin up enough interest. Skip, I will also tell you that I attended and patient this year. Yeah. And the talks were downright, in my opinion, um, they weren't that good, let's put it that way. Um, I think that the talks given at, at, um, at Ham Expo are far better than the ones that were done at Ham Expo. That's, so, that's good to hear. Yeah. Timing-wise, what are we talking about? We're doing solicitations now through, active solicitations now through March, but it's never too late, especially if we come up short. <laughs> but uh, we're, you know, we're expecting replies by May, commitments by June, so that we can start packaging the convention together. Uh, by the end of June, we'd like to get a little bit of information uh, beyond just the, gee, I'll give a talk on X, Y, Z. What's the talk about? Quick bio of the, of the author, that kind of thing. Uh, need to have the talks ready in July. In late July, we're going to package up the presentation schedule, pick which, which talk goes in which room and all of that stuff. And uh, in early August, we actually publish the, the, the publish, you know, the, the written program. And the end of August is when the, when the convention is. Ideas. Up until now, this convention and all of the other conventions that I've checked on have basically said, gee, we'd like to have somebody come and talk. We don't know about what. We're desperate. 
Okay? Well, one of the technical organizations that I belong to does it the other way around. They say, we're looking for talks. Here are the kinds of subjects that we're interested in. The, that particular organization is navigation. So it's, you know, inertial navigation and space navigation, quack, quack, quack. For us, what's more ham radio than antennas and propagation, contesting, DXing, MCOM? Uh, this is a new one. The usual league and division stuff. Uh, and what we're trying to push on modes and building and some non-traditional operating activities. Here's the gist of what we're looking for. Come up with some ideas to spark interest. Here's some ideas for antennas and propagation. I'll let you read through that, and it, it, you're a lousy briefer if you read all your slides word for word. Uh, but you can see it's the whole gamut for, for antennas and propagation. Everything from simple ideas to advanced ideas on propagation to training like what's a decibel. Contesting, not that we don't have any contesters around here, do we? <laughs> okay. Most contesting talks are by the experts for the experts. They're just brags, okay? Let's hit that introductory thing. How do I get into contesting? What can I do as a little pistol instead of a big gun? Okay. Ideas, ideas, ideas. DXing, same thing. The DXers talk to the DXers and then and nobody else. MCOM and public service. Now, the, the other club that I belong to down in Marlboro is a, a heavy public service club. But that's all they know. But, but it does take a certain amount of prep, introduction to pull off public service. Well, let's throw a talk together and say, here's how we did such and so a parade. Or when the balloon goes up, here's what's going to happen. I don't know whether. There we go. Um, one of the things that all of us wring our hands about, aside from the where are we going to get kids because we're all getting old, is what's going on with the hobby. Maybe a good start on that is where we come from artifacts, contributions to the state and technology of amateur radio. I know there's one good talk on that, but it may have been overgiven. Uh, but how can we thrive? Where are we going? How do we get there? Rejuvenation, ARDC, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the idea of grants came out and clubs were all saying, wow, free money, let's belly up to the trough and then we'll figure out what to do with it. Well, it turns out ARDC is a much more organized activity than that. If can I make a comment about that fault in passing? Yeah. ARDC has a board. Yes. The board is not going to give out money for free forever without seeing that there's some return on their investment. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so it is time for the hobby to show how they're and using that money. As a matter of fact, I have a new ARDC board member lined up for one of these talks. And I'm working on a case study. The, the Providence Radio Association, for instance, put in, and you know, so they're willing to say, this is what worked and what didn't work in, in our presentation. The usual league division section activities news, you know, we, some of our, made up of our leaders are more than willing to talk forever. But there's always a, always a space in the convention for them. Here's where I mentioned the, you know, if you're new to FT8, maybe you, you'd be a good guy to do it. Uh, any kind of introduction, digital modes, repeaters, DMR, uh, you know, maybe a talk that the analog modes aren't dead. Who knows? If, if they aren't dead. Uh, Circuits versus programming, SCR radios versus resistors and capacitors. Uh, even uh, practical things like SMD soldering. You can see the, the ideas are just growing here, okay? We've got subject areas. These are just to give I, people ideas to, to head off in their own direction. 
uh, and non-traditional operating uh, activities. As a matter of fact, most operating nowadays seems to be non-traditional. You know, it used to be you'd get on, have a rag chew with somebody. Then in more recent years, it was 5973, thanks for the new contact, new country, whatever it was. Now everything seems to be summits on the air, parks on the air, volcanoes on the air, uh, Girl Scouts on the air, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's plenty to be said. And this is a, this is an aspect of ham radio that is, you know, current newsworthy. And then, uh, training and education. Uh, what I'd like to do on this one, of course, I'm, I'm getting away from the, the sales pitch and saying, I need talks from you guys. But what I'd like to do is get hold of the league and have their training department come up and give us a little bit about what's going on, the uh, the new website activities that they've got for training, the Girl Scout patch, uh, the uh, the Teachers Institute, uh, and get some upfront discussions of those things. So that's it. We're looking for talks. It's your convention. It's the last weekend in August. Whether you can talk or not, I'm sure you can listen. I'm sure you can have a good time down there. And it's a good venue. And as a, as a closing, I will say, as a member of the Algonquin Radio Club of Marlboro, Massachusetts, come on down. Welcome to our hometown. That's all, folks. Any questions? How long have they secured that venue for a number of years now, or the the contracts are signed on a year by year basis, but they've got the venue for for future. Yeah, it, it's one of those places where they're not there in people in the meeting rooms, and they're not having usually there the conferences during the week, yeah. not on the weekends. So I think that they yeah. the business is good. There, there is if if we can build this up to more of a Huntsville size or maybe not a hamvention size. Uh, I'm not sure anything in Massachusetts can handle 31,000 hams. Uh, but uh, there's a double venue down there in that parking area. The hotel can support, like I said, 84 uh, uh, talks over the weekend. But there's a, a separate uh, they call it the convention center, but it's it's more like for trade shows. The building on the left before you get to the hotel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. It's, it's so we've to yeah we've got space to grow down there. So. I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, how did the um, the Hudson division impact this last year? Not too many, and we don't expect the last year we tried to make it. I say we. I wasn't part of this last year. I, uh, I volunteered out of a little bit of frustration. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, Hudson, it was a joint New England Hudson Division convention last year. There was not enough participation and not enough lingering interest that we are back to this being the New England convention. And I just said something that sort of casts aspersion on, on the, you know, the, the committee that does this convention is really good. They're sharp folks. They've been doing it for years. Uh, I felt as a individual ham that I wanted to contribute something. And I found out that Phil Temples, K9HI, uh, the program chairman was the also the only member of the program committee. So it, what you've seen in the last couple of years was strictly Phil's. And I volunteered to help and said, you don't, you worry about all of the activities that are going on. I'll package up the talks. By the time we had our first meeting, there were six people on the committee. And we're expecting Friday to be more attractive to people, to draw people in, uh, training sessions, I have tentatively got somebody to give a half day, a full, how do you say half full day, a half day session on the nano VNA. Not just the usual, here it is, but rather hands on. Bring your own. I'll show you what it is, 
how it works, how to make it do things, and let's build some antennas or test this, that, or the other thing. Uh, they've had Skywarn training and things like that on Friday. Uh, Saturday's a big day for talks. Sunday morning is a big day for talks. Sunday afternoon. Oh, the other thing is there's going to be a, a big uh, MCOM vehicle exhibition this time. So clubs that have got uh, laid out trailers and, and all of that are going to be out in the parking lot. 